Hello, today, uh, well in this video we'll be talking about different methods to approximate the derivative. So three uh, popular methods are the forward, backward, and central difference method. And I'll just go over the subtle differences between these, but they are all basically taking two points on a graph, uh, taking the difference of height, dividing that by the horizontal distance, which is the same as the rise over the run, aka the slope, also known as the derivative. That's what the derivative is. It's the slope. All right, so the forward difference method calculates the derivative by taking a point ahead of your point of interest, subtracting your point of interest and dividing by the step size, and the backward difference approximates the derivative by taking your point of interest, subtracting a point uh, behind your point of interest, and then dividing by your uh, step size. And the central difference method is kind of a, an average of these two methods, both the forward and the backward difference method. And what this does is it takes a point ahead of your point of interest and a point behind your point of interest and divides that by two times the step size to get your derivative uh, approximation. And each of these variables um, give a little bit of clarification. X sub i is uh, the point of interest, so that's where we want to calculate the derivative in each of these cases. Delta x is the step size, so when you're going from one point to another, it's the difference in the x values, and that will be given to you. X i plus one, is the point of interest plus the step size, so it's when you're going for the forward approximation or the central difference method, um, uh, it's the point ahead of your point of interest. And similarly, x sub i minus 1 is the point of interest minus the step size, so it's one point behind your uh, point of interest. So if you're a little hesitant, I'm sure this will become clear with a... Uh, actual problem go through a real example so let's do that so here we're given a problem where we want to approximate the derivative of f of x equals x squared plus 2x at the point x equals 3 using the three methods we just discussed and also a step size of 1 so those variables we just uh, talked about x sub i, our point of interest here, x equals 3, so x sub i equals 3. Um, in that case, the and also we have the step size of 1, so that's delta x equals 1. And then x sub i plus 1 is the step size, is the point of interest plus the step size, so that's just 4 and x sub i minus 1 is the point of interest minus the step size, or 3 minus 1, 2. Okay, let's also, um, it'll make your calculations much easier if you calculate these values beforehand, so we're going to need uh, the function evaluated at 2, 3, and 4, so let's write that f of 2 is 2 squared, 4 plus 4, 8, f of 3, we also need to calculate that, and f of 4. So we get 15 and 24. When we plug these values into our equation. Alright, so these will help us when we actually get down to calculating the derivative approximation for each of the different methods. So the forward difference, I'll rewrite the formula one more time. So here we just substitute our values, what we want to calculate uh, the derivative at x of i equals 3, so that's our point of interest. So 
So notice well, the forward difference method, as the name implies, we're taking a point ahead of our point of interest, and we're using that to calculate the derivative. So f of 4 minus f of 3 all over 1, that's just 24 minus 15 over 1, or 9. So with the forward difference method, we get our f prime of x value, or f prime of 3 value, approximately equal to 9. So we do the same thing with the backward difference. If I can get a piece of paper. So the backward difference, f prime of x i is going to be f of x i minus f of x i minus 1. Okay. And we'll substitute these values that we have right here. The ones we calculated. So f prime of 3 is going to be f of 3 minus f of 2 all over 1 and plugging our values we have 15 minus 8 over 1 equals 7 so with the backward difference method we get f prime of 3 is approximately 7 alright now let's do the last approximation, the central difference method, and that's going to be the average of these two methods. I'll write down the general equation. Alright, so that's just f prime of 3 equals f of 4 minus f of 2 all over 2. And substituting our values, that's 24 minus 8 over 2, or 16 over 2, equals 8. And we have f for the Central difference, method, central difference method, the approximation of the derivative f prime of 3 is 8. Okay, and the actual value of the derivative for a comparison, f of x equals x squared plus 2x, so the derivative is 2x plus 2, and if we want the derivative evaluated at 3, that's just 6 plus 2 equals 8. So the actual value of the derivative at 3 is 8, so the central difference method in this case proves to be the most accurate. The backward difference method we got uh, approximation of 7, and the forward difference we got 9, so they both of the forward and backward difference method were both off by a value of 1. And I also want to point out that this example we, we uh, picked a, a function where the derivative could be calculated very easily and we could evaluate that at any point to get the derivative. But uh, the, this method uh, for calculating the derivatives is, is useful when it's not easy to calculate the derivative. Sometimes you'll have trigonometric functions and you don't feel like doing the product rule several times or the value of the derivative is not known or calculated easily and that's where these methods come in handy. 
So I also did want to make a point to look at this graphically and kind of compare the different methods. So let's do that. So here I have a plot of the function we were just dealing with. This is f of x equals x squared plus 2x. And I highlighted the three points we used. So I'll color in each of these points. So this point here in the red is uh, 4, 24. And that's, uh, you use this for the forward difference method. And the backwards. I want to also point out this point of 2, 8 right here. And then the point of interest right here, central, is 3, comma, 15. So what each of these methods does is it takes the slope using two different points which is just the rise over the run so the forward difference method uses these two points to get the slope so it takes that slope right there and the backward difference method takes the point of interest and uh, the point uh, backwards by one step size and takes the slope right there. And this right here is the delta x value and this right here is the delta x value of 1 and 1. Those are our step sizes and the height is just the difference of tw right here 24 minus 15 and then 15 minus 8 and also I want to point out the central difference method is the slope between both of these points yep getting sloppy now so that takes both of these points in consideration where the step size was 2 um, thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in another video.